Hello everyone, welcome back to the Fat Hipster channel. It's John, and today what I'm going to be doing for you is reviewing the new Global Favorites at the McDonald's headquarters on Randolph Street in Chicago, Illinois. And today I have two sandwiches, a side, and a dessert that I'm going to go over with you. The bakery items they have are mostly the same they've had for a while now. They haven't really changed. Um, that's the two uh, Canadian donuts. They have a glazed and apple fritter. And they also have the McPops that I, I think I've actually done before as a review. And those are the white chocolate and the hazelnut. It's like a cream filled mini donut. Anyway, not doing those. They also advertise like their cafe coffees as being global favorites, but the, it's the same espressos and stuff that you can get at any McDonald's. It's not really specifically only to the uh, headquarters in Chicago that do the global favorites. But the global favorites have changed since the last time that I've reviewed it, except for they still have the McPlant, which was the Beyond Burger uh, that McDonald's had that I already reviewed. It's still there if you're interested. But what I have for you today is a Aussie Angus burger. And you can tell by the Aussie part that it is from Australia. This is what it looks like. And um, what does it have on it? It has a garlic mayo. It has a beetroot slice. A grilled sauce. Lettuce. Monterey Jack cheese onion rings, rasher bacon, Angus seasoning, salt on an artisan roll. I'm going to try to see what I can look at here. Take it apart. Um, there's a lot going on right there. Look at that menagerie of colors. I'm guessing that's the garlic mayo. The grill sauce is probably like this. A one ish. Turn that off before it makes too much noise in the video. And the grill sauce is like a spicy barbecue y kind of thing. The lettuce is. I don't know if you're going to taste any kind of crunch for that lettuce. It's just all gloop in the sauces. I'm going to try to show you this without moving it or messing it around but you can see that like purple disc on top that is a slice of beetroot underneath the beetroot let's see if i can move the beetroot over and show you the other parts of this hmm. this is the what they're calling rasher bacon it looks kind of just like ham and then you have your two onion rings you can see uh, there's a white kind of cheese right there. That's what they're calling Monterey Jack. I'm guessing the Angus, the Angus seasoning is just something they sprinkle on the Angus burger. There's nothing on the bottom part. So we're going to put it all back together. We're going to try this Angus uh, Aussie burger. I'm going to have to take a few bites of this to get really everything out here. Okay. I haven't got to the beetroot yet, but uh, burger tastes meaty. Definitely get an oniony flavor from the onion rings. Let's get a few more bites. Still haven't penetrated the beetroot. Not that time. You can see that thick piece of beet right on there. Let's keep going.
It's weird. Look how thick that beetroot is. It's almost as thick as the burger. It's definitely making all the sauces a nice shade of red. I was going to say orange there. This is probably the most interesting global item that I've had so far. And I think I've done like three or four rounds of reviewing their global favorites. And I think it's it's that beetroot. It's so big and like very like densely crunchy. We've had beets before. You know that flavor. Um, it's not a very strong flavor, but it's still noticeable as you bite through it. The sauces are very tangy and pronounced. Definitely get that like a garlicky tanginess from the garlic mayo you definitely get like a spicy smoky from the, the grill sauce and you get that hockey puck plank of beetroot on top of there the thing that like i don't think m makes any noticeable at all is this rasher bacon even by itself it doesn't carry a ton of flavor. I do know that uh, if you go to the headquarters uh, during breakfast, they have a global breakfast item. Um, and it's basically their breakfast sandwiches that you can get with either sausage or the um, Canadian bacon that comes in the McMuffin or the, uh, the regular McDonald's bacon. But now you can get a breakfast sandwich. Uh, it's labeled as a Australian global favorite, um, but they just use this rasher bacon instead of anything else. And I think I would be disappointed if I got it. It's just so thin and it's not got a lot of flavor, especially when you have all of this stuff on here. Any flavor that rasher bacon gave you is gone. Mm. If you like a really saucy sandwich that just has like pops of every kind of flavor and texture, you might like this one. And the Angus patty is pretty big and has a good meaty flavor to it. Mm. My beetroot fell out. Case beady. The rasher bacon. Even in the full on slice by itself, besides like a little bit of salt, it just tastes like all the sauces that were on top of it. The onion rings, because of all the sauce, doesn't add like a lot of crispy or crunchiness to it, but it does add a nice cooked onion flavor to it. Mm. Now, you might be able to tell I actually like this sandwich. 
So let's keep eating it. In fact, I'm going to finish right now. Mm. I like it. The only thing I think could improve it is either putting more of that bacon on it or putting just regular bacon on it because whatever that rash of bacon is, it's too thin, doesn't have a lot of flavor, not crispy at all, it doesn't add anything to the meal. And as I said, there were onion rings on there, right? You can actually order a pack of onion rings. And if you look at them, they look like a, a battered type of onion ring, not a breaded one. One thing I want to do is get some of the onion out of the ring. If I could actually get one of these onions out, or at least like a portion of it. If you've ever made homemade onion rings, or work at a restaurant that made onion rings, one thing that good onion rings do is there's like a little inner membrane uh, when you're cutting onions that um, if you fry them up, everything will get tender except for that papery bit. And it will make it so when you're eating it and you bite into a onion ring, it could potentially just pull out the entire ring. I heard you taking this apart, so that's not a good example of this one. But here's a little cooking tip. If you were making homemade onion rings, cut the slices. Put them all in a Ziploc bag. Put that in the freezer for at least a couple hours. It will break down some of the more fibrous parts of the onion. Take it out of the freezer after a few hours. Put it in some water to thaw out. Then put that in on a, a tray with paper towels to dry them off. One by one, you're going to go through and pull off the inner membrane of each of the rings. Doing this process will soften everything up except for that papery part. The papery part is still going to hold together fairly well and it's going to peel off relatively easily. After that you can go about doing whatever you were going to do with them, breading, uh, battering them, whatever, but do that step first, give her that inner membrane and it's going to be perfect. Now, I've tasted a few of these already. They are pretty good. They did give me this spicy buffalo sauce, which I assume I'm supposed to go with this. I didn't ask for the spicy buffalo sauce, but they gave it to me. Let's try a ring. Some buffalo sauce. Yeah, I don't think this will go together. The onion rings by themselves are nice. I don't know how freshly they make these. I doubt they batter and fry them right there. They're probably frozen. But I prefer battered onion rings over breaded ones. I think battering gives you more crunch. More air can get in there. You can put some like a baking soda or baking powder to like puff up the batter while it's being cooked. It helps to keep the inner onion from like browning but still cooking. And it also 
brings out the sweetness of an onion. You see, I can bite through that without pulling it out. It's another good sign of good onion ring. So far, too up, too good. Australia, we got some good McDonald's exclusives. All right, moving from Australia a little bit north, we go to the Republic of China. What does the Republic of China have? They have what they're calling the Kung Pao Double Crispy Chicken Sandwich. As a Kung Pao dressing, shred lettuce, two chicken patties, and a crisscross bun. Open that up, you can see lettuce and Kung Pao sauce. Kind of looks like um, mac sauce in uh, color appearance. Um, but other than looking like that, it probably tastes different. Then you have not one, but two McChicken patties. And then we have more sauce on the bottom. Nope, just a blank bun on the bottom. Much less ado to this one. It should just taste like a spicy chicken sandwich, but the spice should have a Kung Pao flavor to it. Let's see if it does. Here we go. Hmm. I'm going to take one more bite here. What is Kung Pao flavor? Mm. Kung Pao is supposed to taste sweet, sour, savory with a signature tingle of heat from Sichuan peppers. Is there a Kung Pao wee? Kung Pao chicken. <clears throat> also, transcribe as Gong Bao or Kung Po. It is a stir fried Chinese dish with cubes of chicken, peanuts, vegetables, traditionally Welsh onion only, and chili peppers. The classic dish is Sichuan cuisine. Huh? Sichuan peppercorns. Interesting, interesting. With that in mind, I'm going to take another bite. It does taste sweet. It tastes like a like a sweet bell pepper kind of sauce. You know, sometimes if you have uh sort of like red bell peppers mixed in with something, it like adds a sweetness to the surrounding sauce it's in. That's kind of like the sweetness that I'm getting from here. There's some spice to it. Um, usually Szechuan spice tends to be a little more of a buzzy spice. Um, it can like numb uh, your tongue a little bit. I'm not getting that. I don't know if they're using real Szechuan peppers in here at all. They may be. I'm just not getting a, a whole lot of that uh, sensation. i blow my nose real quick because I feel like it's a little bit. <laughs> And that's not all from spice. I just feel like I was congested a little bit there for a second. And like, you know, when you're congested, like, sometimes your ears will feel plugged. That's what was going on. Anyway, 
doesn't taste too special. Um, the only weird thing is the Kung Pao sauce. And the Kung Pao sauce tastes like a, if you mix sweet and sour with a, a spice, a creamy spicy sauce. And some like sweet red pepper, red bell pepper. It's not bad, but uh, it's not really special. I wouldn't uh, run out to get that. The Aussie Burger and the Onion Rings, though, they're pretty good. Um, lastly, I have a dessert dish, which they claim is from the country of Malaysia. And you can order this two separate ways. In a Sunday or a McFlurry. I got in a Sunday. I suggest that if you were to try this, you also get in a Sunday. Because the difference between this and a McFlurry is that they mix it. That's it. A Sunday, they just put it on top. A McFlurry, they put it on top and they put it under the blender and mix it. The McFlurry, if I, uh, the McFlurry is $4.49 for the small. The Sunday is $2.99 for the small. So that's a dollar fifty more for mixing it. And I checked all the ingredients are same, it's just soft serve ice cream and the topping. And this is the uh, mango Sunday. You can get the mango McFlurry as well as I just uh, described to you. And it's like a chunks of mango, but also like a syrupy consistency. And here we go. We'll take a bite. There's a good sweet mango flavor to it. The little cubes bites of mango, like this one, they have a weird texture. They taste, and they feel denser, almost <clears throat> crunchy, like not dry and crunchy. They're definitely like in a syrupy sauce. I just thought if I bit into it, it would be a lot more softer. Almost as if it was like a a dehydrated piece of mango, and then it was rehydrated in the sauce. And uh, if I look at this cube, I don't know if you can see it, but like, look at how it's not flat on the sides; it's like drawn in. I don't know if you can see like that concavity where each of the sides is drawn in ever so slightly. Which let me believe that these were dehydrated at some point and then mixed in with a sauce. Which only rehydrated is to a point. It has a it looks like if you were eating fruit leather chopped up and mixed into ice cream. Well, that's uh, how I would describe it. Anyway, flavor is good. The texture of the ma mango pieces is a little bit off. You may like it. Um, for me, it was a little bit odd feeling. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. The current global favorites at the McDonald's headquarters. And this is a, as of the beginning of October 2022. Anyway, thank you for watching. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.